Hollywood. It's Hollywood Stands Up, starring Ed Galvez. Music by Elemento P. And your host tonight, Cody Miller. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jody Miller. Keep it going for Elemento P. Who doesn't love the alphabet? How are we doing tonight, Tuesday night? Feeling good? Yeah. I am feeling good. It's fall. It feels like fall, right? <laughs> you guys all went quiet. You're like, what is fall, Jody? What the fuck is that? We live in Southern California. It is, no, I like it. It feels good. I'm glad that it's getting cold. I stopped shaving my legs like a month ago. Enough. <laughs> I just let it grow, and then I tuck it in the boots. That's why I wear the boots. Tuck that shit right in. Halloween's coming up. Are we dressing up? Who's dressing up? Are we dressing up? <laughs> This woman here is like, absolutely not, okay? I have a sparkly top, Jody. Don't even imply that I dress up. Absolutely not. I drink a martini. I don't dress up. That's what I do. I'm going to dress up this year. I've decided I am. I'm going to dress up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to a party. I'm going to dress up. This year, I'm going to be a virgin. I'm going to go to a party. I'm going to find a guy. I'm going to have sex with him. And right in the middle, I'm going to start crying. <laughs> I love you. Ladies, if you want to do that, feel free to take my idea. Uh, I just got back from Afghanistan about two months ago. Let's give a round of applause to our men and women <laughs> serving over there. I'm not going to lie. Uh, Afghanistan, total shithole. No joke, okay? And I'm from Jersey, so I obviously know shitholes, okay? I'm an expert on it. But I did get 67% off Groupon to go, so fuck it. <laughs> do you guys love Groupon? Who doesn't love Groupon? We love it, right? We, I, you know, it's so funny because they do have great stuff on Groupon, but they also have weird and unusual shit. She's like, stop. She's like, stop. Don't stop it. You're embarrassing me. Is that, did you say mom? Is that your mom? Oh my God, you guys look like sisters. No joke, honestly. In a good way, both. In a good way. Did you, did you get a Groupon? She's like, I can't. Did you get the martini with the Groupon? Or? <laughs> well, that's good, though. No, see, that's a smart purchase. And the top, see, she's smart. But then they've got, like, alligator surfing for 72% off, which is like, what the fuck is that? But then you feel obligated to get it because the deal's been bought and you don't want to be the one asshole who didn't get that shit, right? It's like, I have two things for gutter sweeping and I don't even own a house. I don't know what the fuck I'm gonna do with that, but I felt the need to get it. I was pressured into it. I was, so I'm in Afghanistan and here's the funny thing about Afghanistan. Uh, they don't have toilets on some of the small bases that they flew us to. They didn't even have porta potties. So you have to piss and poop into a plastic bag. They're called wag bags. That's what that. Well, I say that as if it's for both. Actually, it, that's just for the guys because everybody knows that girls don't shit. That's an urban legend, right? <laughs> we all know that. Right? Everybody knows that our insides are made of cotton candy. Okay, <laughs> we just let it build up and then we sneeze. That's what we do. That's how girls. But for the guys, you have to go in the bag. But you do. You have to go into a bag. You take that bag into another bag. You put a gel in it, mush it up, then walk down to a flaming shit pit and toss it in. No joke, that will humble your ass, Sparkly Top, no joke. <laughs> because you are surrounded by hot Marines and you cannot flirt with a hot Marine when you're holding a bag of your own piss. Unacceptable. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a purse, okay? It's a, I mean, unless you got it on Groupon, is that what you're gonna say? <laughs> <laughs> what, what'd you say with the bag of shit? It does, actually, and it's 23% off, so that's, it's a good percent. It's a little low, but it's good. But that's exactly right. No, she understands what I'm talking about. But here's the thing. The first time I went, I was a total girl. I was, an abs I was like, oh, my God, I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't piss in a bag. I can't. Oh, my God, it's horrifying. Then I walked down there, and I went to, like, toss it in, and the wind caught my pee, and it went flying, and two Marines had to come and pick it up and toss it in there. But the second time, I remember thinking, you know what, Jody? Grow some balls, okay? You were a softball player in high school. You show them what's up. And I went down there and I tossed it, went flying. And two Marines behind me yelled, yeah! And for some reason, I turned around and I'm like, that's what's up, fuckers! <laughs> <laughs> Zephyr Fi. It was so awkward. 
It was great, though, being surrounded by, uh, by all those Marines. Hot Marines. Ladies, save your money on internet dating and just go to Afghanistan. That's why I went, to buy myself a man. No job. A man and a baby. They'll get a twofer. They'd like to knock that shit right up. <laughs> this is what I realized, though, being around all those men for two weeks. Guys, you can find anything to fill your spare time with. It's amazing. It's an amazing feat, because women need a lot of stimulus to keep us occupied. And guys, you like to play that game, what would you do for a million dollars? You guys love playing that game. Hours playing. What would you do for a million dollars? Which I have now decided should actually just be called, how much money would it take for you to be gay? <laughs> right? Because doesn't that game always start out one way but tends to end a totally different way? It always starts out with something like, hey, dude, would you shave your head for a million dollars? But ends with, would you blow Steve for a million dollars? <laughs> It's like you're testing your friends to see how much money it would take, you know? And you guys all know you have that one guy friend that would do it for a lot fucking less than he should. <laughs> and it's awkward, right? He usually comes flying out of the corner. He's all like, dude, I'm going to Steve for $10,000. That's a lot of money. Where the fuck is Steve? Just get Steve on the phone. <laughs> Ladies don't play that game, right? Ladies, we do not play that game. You can't be like, hey, Jody, would you go down on Sydney for a million dollars? Like, uh, I did it for a shot of tequila. What's the game? I don't. <laughs> Do I get a million dollars? Because that's awesome. <laughs> I am on Match.com. Is there any uh, internet daters out there? No? no one's going to admit that shit. But somebody at home. Thank you, Sparkly Top. <laughs> Groupon. That's what we do. <laughs> We internet did and we do it for less, put it to you that way. Uh, I fucking hate Match, honestly. I feel like Match.com basically tells me to settle when they send me my matches. That's what I feel like. <laughs> right, because you have to fill out your profile and they send you matches based on your likes and dislikes. The other, I'm not that picky, I'm not. The other day, I got an email though that was like, hey Judy, meet Lee, a five foot two, 63 year old Asian man from Bakersfield. <laughs> he doesn't drive. <laughs> But guess what? He's also a non-smoker. Match! <laughs> I, was at a, I was out at a bar last week, no joke, and this young kid came up to me, right out of the blue, with all the confidence in the world, and he said, did you just fart? Because you blew me away. <laughs> Not making this up. I'm like, really? Did you just try to pick me up with a fart line? Is that what you said? We sneeze, fucker. That's what I told him. <laughs> I don't shit or fart. <laughs> so we have a couple of you guys. Oh, you guys know you guys. Oh, no. <laughs> you, both, you both were like, absolutely not. We don't touch each other naked, okay, Jody? But we're just friends. We're friends. Yeah. You said that with so much conviction. You're like, we are friends. <laughs> have you ever had sex? No, I'm afraid oh not. That means he wants to fuck you. That's what that means. <laughs> Ooh, she's like... Okay, good. He's not your brother, is he? Because that would be weird. <laughs> I mean, for him, obviously. <laughs> okay, just making sure. Just wanted to see where we're at here. What about you guys? You guys a couple? How long? Yeah, see, you know, you both sit in unison. Obviously, you both a couple. I, like I like the way guys sit. Guys have a particular way of sitting. I like looking at guys, whether it's at a theater or at a comedy club. Now you're all adjusting. But guys, you lean back. It's like the guys are leaning back. You're like, entertain me. But your legs are all wide open as if to say, I'll take a blowjob at any moment. <laughs> Like, you're turned to the side, but like you don't have enough room, but your legs are open, so she can jump right in there. I like it, because you're thinking ahead. You're always thinking about that. And I, I admire that, okay? Because if you're not sitting like that, you're sitting like this. You, that's why guys cross their legs like this. I don't know if you know it. Guys cross their legs like this just in case somebody trips and falls on your dick. Smart. <laughs> that's the law of attraction, okay? I read the secret. You bring the leg up. Ladies, lock that shit up. We lock it up. You can't even feel your back leg. It's locked up. Lock and load, and then you take us to dinner, possibly a comedy show, slowly, 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 <laughs> Afghanistan. That's how that shit happens right there. <laughs> Middle East. Not only do guys sit like that, though, guys, are, you guys love to show us when you're turned on, too, which I guess I appreciate in a way, but it's just shocking. I was on a date a couple of weeks ago. We're just kissing goodnight. That's all we're doing. We're just kissing goodnight, and right in the middle of the makeout session, he pulls back and goes, Phew. Look what you did to me. <laughs> look what you did. I think younger guys do that, though. Older guys go, look what I can still do. <laughs> like, great, how long is that going to last? Let's get on that. 
So I have a cat, obviously. <laughs> I'm that girl. It's not on my match.com profile, don't worry. I gotta spring that shit on the second day. You just can't whip out without a cat. I gotta be like, I got a cat! Huh! <laughs> Guys, it's you typically that don't like cats, right? That's a fair statement. Guys typically don't like cats. And I don't understand why you don't like cats, because you're exactly like a cat. I know we've been conditioned to think that men are like dogs and women are like cats, but this couldn't be further from the truth. Guys, you're like cats. You're aloof and emotionally unavailable. <laughs> women are exactly like dogs. We are exactly like dogs. We're like, hey, we're going, we're going, we're going, we're going, we're going, we're going. Can I go? Can I go? Can I go? Can I go? Can I? I'm gonna wait right here. 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 Shoes. See, guys, you're like cats. You're like, oh, you're home. <laughs> OK, so this is what's going to happen. Uh, you're going to feed me. <laughs> then I'm going to stare out the window at nothing. <laughs> then I'm going to pass out of the bathroom. Deal? Is that deal? <laughs> Women are like dogs. We clean up after ourselves, right? Ladies, you ever seen a dog vomit? Eats that shit right back up. <laughs> Usually it does it quick, too. It goes off to the side, vomits, eats it up. No evidence. All gone. Guys are like cats. You won't vomit anywhere I make a big fucking scene about it. You're like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> And then you're like, oh god, can you clean that up? That's disgusting. I don't want to touch that. <laughs> Here comes a dog. I got it. I got it. <laughs> Women are like dogs. We need to be groomed. Shampoo, condition, blow dry, fluffy. Guys are like, catch, like, what? I'm dirty? Am I dirty? <laughs> Let's go. I'm ready. I don't. So guys, the next time a girl tells you she has a cat, you should thank her. Honestly, thank her. Because think about it, the work's been done for you. We're used to being ignored and emotionally neglected. <laughs> Haven't you ever heard a girl talk about her cat? Doesn't she sound like she's talking about an abusive relationship? She does, and it's uncomfortable, right? She's like, no, he's really different when we're alone. You don't know. <laughs> no, you don't see us every day, but he's really affectionate when no one else is around. <laughs> no, you don't want no these scratches? What? <sighs> My name is Jody Miller. You guys warm up? <laughs> you guys have a great show coming up. Okay, this first guy, he was a writer for, uh, he was a writer for, I don't want to mess this up, so let me get this out perfectly. Uh, he was a writer for Spice TV's Man Series, and he was featured on NPR's Marketplace, which couldn't be more opposite. Put your hands together <laughs> for Stereo's Coconut! Thank you, I'm Stereos Konos. I'll tell you guys a little bit about myself. Uh, here's something about me. I retain like too much information. Like if I look bloated right now, it's because I'm retaining information. <laughs> but uh, it bothers me though that we prize some information over others. Like you're a real smart guy if you can name all the presidents, but you're a real loser if you can name all the Pokemon. <laughs> that bothers me. Because if you think about it, there have only been 44 presidents. There are 151 Pokemon. <laughs> Not counting gold or silver, which I don't. <laughs> it ends at Mew, the rarest of the Pokemon. <laughs> or what was the point of the movie? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so like, the other thing about Pokemon, Pokemon all have like different strengths and weaknesses that you gotta memorize. Presidents all have the same weakness, bullets. <laughs> that was easy. That wasn't hard at all to do. I was on a train uh, heading to San Diego. It was like a full train. And uh, so like, I was sitting next to this little nine-year-old girl, and she just kept singing the Pokemon theme over and over. She was like, gotta catch them all, gotta do it, gotta catch them all. <laughs> and it took every ounce of my strength not to start singing along, because I love that song. No, oh, I do have to catch them all. Thanks, song. <laughs> I'll do whatever songs tell me to do. All my dancers are safe. Thanks. I think a lot about Pokemon, clearly. And uh, it, here's what, I've kind of broken it down. I've kind of figured it out. Like, Pokemon involves capturing an animal, going out into the woods, having your animal fight another animal to within an inch of its life, 
and then you capture that wounded animal in an orb. It's essentially sorcery meets dog fighting. <laughs> There's the thing in America. We don't like dog fighting here. We got real mad at that guy. So, <laughs> we don't like that guy. I got to those off. So, here's how they get around the fact that you're playing like a dog fighting simulator. Pokemon love to fight. They love to fight, and if they don't fight, they get sick. They're genetically predisposed to fighting. That's exactly how we justified slavery. <laughs> That's exactly how, oh, they love to work. They're genetically predisposed to work. If they don't work, they get very upset. <laughs> That's why I want to start a Pokemon Underground Railroad. <laughs> It's gonna take these Pokemon from Japan all the way to Canada. Or the worst thing that's gonna happen to them is that someone's passive aggressive to them. Oh, you uh, haven't evolved into Charizard yet? You'll get there. <laughs> Canada. Then, uh, by the way, like, uh, sometimes when like my night, like for a while, like sometimes when my night was going like particularly well, uh, like if I was like out with a girl or something, I would say this, I would go, well this night's gone from Pikachu to Raichu. <laughs> Which would immediately stop my night from going well, for some strange reason, weird, weird times. I'll tell you guys a little bit more about myself. I, uh, like, I'm getting older, and uh, babies are starting to interest me for the first time ever. It's like I want a backup copy of myself or something. <laughs> I was at Denny's the other day, and I saw this adorable baby. Do you people ever see a baby so cute you need to remind yourself not to steal it? <laughs> I was just like, oh, no! Not your baby! Like, it got... <laughs> not your, uh, I, uh, it got to this point. It got to the point where, like, I'm... I, like, in my head, I was unwittingly coming up with, like, a Batman-style plan as to how I was gonna steal this baby. Like, out of nowhere, I was like, grab Sugar Shaker, throw sugar in Waitress's face, take every Sugar Shaker, knock out lights, grab baby, run out of Denny's, send baby to college, love baby forever. <laughs> I have some advice for you guys about babies. Like, if you see a baby that you want to pick up or hold, you say things like, oh, what a cute baby, you might have held your baby. Like, oh, what an adorable baby, you might have pick up your baby. Uh, don't do this, you won't, you won't get to hold the baby. Don't go, hand me the child. <laughs> Give me the child. <laughs> Don't call the baby the star baby. Don't say this baby is the only thing between me and a portal to the goblin dimension. Definitely don't go, my, your baby's full of blood. <laughs> Precious blood. You won't get to hold the baby. Your Christmas will be ruined. Oh, boy. Well, I have a friend who's a, uh, he's an editor for, for Hollywood films. He works at, at Warner Brothers. And, uh, oh, hey, who wants to get rich? Uh, he's an editor at Warner Brothers, and uh, he edits, like, a lot of, like, kind of like, big Hollywood movies. And he turns me on to, like, certain lines or scenes that were cut from the films. Like, I feel really lucky to know him. Uh, so here's a list of lines that were not in the movie Hotel for Dogs. <laughs> Due only to time constraints, not due to content. Right. Line number one. Don Cheadle, what are you doing here? <laughs> Line number two. My children are dead! Damn you, Hotel for Dogs! <laughs> Line number three. Line number three, not. Line number three. When will humans learn that dogs hate hotels? Clack, 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 clack. <laughs> not in the movie Hotel for Dogs. And finally, the last line that was not in the movie Hotel for Dogs due only to time constraints, these dogs are delicious. <laughs> not in the movie Hotel for Dogs. Well, uh, before I split, I'll just I'll say uh, one more thing I kind of noticed. I was at home recently. I was watching uh, an episode of the television show Step by Step. And uh, there was like a, it was in syndication. I didn't 
break out the DVD box set of Step by Step I Have, which is just shaped like a bunch of steps. It's pretty cool. Anyway, <laughs> anyway. And I, uh, there was like a food fight in this episode of Step by Step. I'm watching it, and it made me realize, wow, like all sitcom food fights are terrible. Like, uh, here, I'll, I'll do an impression of it for you right now. Yeah, here's how it went. It was like, uh, oh yeah? I'll show you the Lambert's so not the stupider of the two families in the step-by-step -step house. Ah! <laughs> ah! <laughs> oh! Oh, what? A pie in my face during a food fight we're clearly having? I'm outraged! JT was so upset. <laughs> like, the other thing, like, no one ever moves, like, in a sitcom food fight. Like, if there's, like, a bowl, like, if someone, like, tried to dump a whole bowl of pudding on my head, I would, like, juke left or right. I would be like, oh, no, pudding on me. Ow, what kind of world does this happen? <laughs> oh, Lord, my petard hoisted. <laughs> Now, here's the thing. I went, to, uh, I went to a college called Emerson College, and uh, we had like a lot of food fights at Emerson. I got into like 15 food fights <laughs> my time at Emerson College, most of them caused by me. Let's move on. Uh, and so, but here's, so here's how I food fought and how you should food fight, all right? Someone throws a roll, food fights on. Grab a pie, throw a pie, immediately grab another pie. And just keep grabbing pies and throwing pies, keep a good bread of pies between you and the other food fighters, and after you run out of pies, start punching and kicking! <laughs> punching and kicking! And stamp on people! Give them the Captain Kirk and the American History X! And once they're on the ground, go, don't you ever, ever get into a food fight with me again. I want you to tell your friends about this. I want you to blog about this. <laughs> Jetpack away. <laughs> <laughs> guys, that's it for me. Have a good night, guys. <laughs> Jump in. Keep it going. Come on, guys. Keep it going, Stereos. You guys ready for some more comedy? You guys are a great crowd. All right, you've seen this next gal on MTV, Last Comic Standing. Also, she's also a writer for The Dish. You've also seen her on The Late Late Show with Craig Ferguson, and she's a member of the award-winning sketch group Birds of Prey. Put your hands together for Lizzie Cooperman! <laughs> I'm like, do you want me to call you doctor? And she goes, no, I just have my master's. And I was like, do you want me to call you master? <laughs> Don't cry. <laughs> That's why, you guys. Black beans are black beans. Green beans are green beans. But chickpeas are garbanzo beans. <laughs> Three names. Indian peas, chickpeas, garbanzo. It's the celebrity bean. It's the Marshall Mathers of 
legumes. I heard Lady Gaga was seen at Amalfi with garbons. So I think somebody named it in a state of total chaos. Like, we have to move these mattresses out by Sunday, and the prices are garbons. I love these curtains. But the children need play clothes, Captain. The children need play clothes. I hate musical theater. I grew up in a musical family. There's nothing worse than finding out your sister is a squirter. <laughs> my sister, <laughs> my sister is really uptight and she called me. She had no idea I was going and she goes, Lizzie, I slept with a song and this fluid literally shot across the room. And I was like, oh, so you're still the talented one. You're still the talented one. <laughs> She's a singer and her voice is so loud it can shatter glass. I'm like, what about my glasses? <laughs> my parents are like, if your sister is the talented one in the family, is it really necessary for you to see? <laughs> and they said on a related note, we think you should start wearing garbage bags. I mean, I hate musicals. <laughs> I hate the Phantom of the Opera. He's disgusting. He's like, softly. So it's like all he's good for is a fucking proactive commercial. <laughs> That's like. Would you date a guy with an alias? Like, I want you to meet my friend Eric. But don't call him Eric. Call him the vortex of long form improv. <laughs> You're like, that, I feel like I may have spit on your food, and I apologize. <laughs> they say you can tell a lot about a person by the way they eat. Like, if you eat crouched over, it means you're in control of your diet. And if you eat, I don't know, if you eat crouched over, you're controlled by food. And sitting straight up, you're in control of your diet. And my cousin is an interesting example of this because she bends over when she binges, but she sits up straight when she purges. Wow. <laughs> a lot of stained clothing and teeth. Her teeth are stained. <laughs> my cousin is embarrassed. She told everyone she was pregnant, and it turns out she's actually colorblind. she will only take a black and white home pregnancy test. Which is basically you take an old fashioned camera, hold it right here and just take a picture. If you're not pregnant, the picture is black. And if you are pregnant, the picture is still black. However, nine months later, you will have a child. I don't want kids, because I don't want anybody like as an adult, you guys, this is the art of illusion. It's a one piece. <laughs> Blaming me, you know what I mean, for their problems as an adult. Like if when my kid is little, I'm like, yeah, you can totally quit the harpsichord. And then flash to 20 years later, and he's like, why did you let me quit the harpsichord? <laughs> you knew that I had an affinity for percussive instruments. I don't know why he's British. <laughs> my fingers never bled, yet I had one bad day, and he said it was fine if I threw away my raven's quill, <laughs> which is what is used to pluck a harpsichord because I Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> now my friend Jim has a Baroque revival station on XM Radio, and guess who missed the boat, mother? <laughs> Why don't you get yourself another copy of The Artist's Way? They've been on sale at garage sale since 19 fucking 82. Here's a riddle, okay? A man is rushed to the hospital. The doctor says, I can't operate on this man, he's my son. The doctor is not his father. Who is the doctor? His gay stepdad. But thank you for judging. <laughs> I've learned about friends who are single mothers, and I hear about how hard their lives are, and I feel bad sometimes, because I'm like, no one's icing my cupcake. Do you have anything to justify my pain? Like, my friends who are single moms have the best complaints. I'll be like, oh, you want to hang out tonight? And they go, I only have two hands. <laughs> I could never say I only have two hands unless someone was like, Lizzie, do you have three or more hands? <laughs> like part of me wants to pretend I'm a single mom. I know it sounds bad, like for sympathy, I want to walk around with flour on my face and haul around a diaper genie. <laughs> like if I had three wishes, I'd wish for more hands. <laughs> a cup of taster's choice, <laughs> because they love that. <laughs> and a warm bath. And for the taquitos to microwave themselves. <laughs> the reason I get four wishes instead of three is because I'm a single. <laughs> I don't know. My friends bring it up every occasion. I'll be like, oh, do you have a five dollar bill? And they'll be like, oh, no, I'm sorry. All I have is singles. Mother. 
Uh, you were diagnosed with a rare skin disease. Oh, really? Maybe it's shingles. <laughs> What's your favorite potato chip? Shingles. Mother. Shingles. We're having an economic crisis. Do you feel it? I want to feel it more. I want Whole Foods to change their name to bread and mutton. <laughs> I want people to like, start wearing knickers and like memorize the lyrics to Les Mis. Has anyone here had a nervous breakdown next to a lamppost? No, then it's not a crisis. I'm gonna feel it. And I love the Obama administration. I think they might be a little bit sexist, though. I think Hillary Clinton's a little overqualified to be a secretary. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Biden's online. I'm Mr. Biden. <laughs> I was fired from the pottery barn. Every day at the pottery barn, we're supposed to sit in a circle and say what we want to be famous for by the end of our shift. What do you want to be famous for? And everyone got really excited about it. Like, the first woman was like, I'm going to be famous for greeting everybody. And everyone was like, woo! Let's do it! Sell those pillow shams! Let's go! The next one was like, I'm gonna be famous for suggestive selling. <laughs> Woo! And then it came to me and I was like, I'm going to be famous for the Pottery Barn Massacre! <laughs> <laughs> and then it got awkward. See, I can sing. <laughs> then I like the way, it, like, you, when you work retail, you're supposed to use interesting names for colors. Like, you don't say, oh, we have it in purple and yellow. You say, like, oh, we have it in eggplant and mustard. But they didn't like the way that I did it. I'd be like, yeah, we have this couch in uncooked hamburger pink. <laughs> and if you don't like that, we also have it in my dead twin blue. <laughs> Please take a look around. Let me know what you like. In college, I was a nude model for a bisexual artist. <laughs> and he didn't paint me, but he said that in order to paint fruit, he needed to feel confused. Life, 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 life. Uh, it's occurred to me that a lot of children's stories have a frog in knickers who answers the door. There's always a frog in knickers and he's like, welcome! He does a full plie in every book. And I want that frog in my life, not only because it would be so cool to have a frog as a butler, but I also want to catch him slacking off and like reprimand him and abuse him a little bit. I want to come home and see a frog in knickers leap off the couch, and I'll be like, oh no, no, Winthrop, because you know a frog in knickers would be named Winthrop. Sit back down, Winthrop, we'll count it as another lunch break. <laughs> and I'll be like, I answered the door like 20 times. And I'll be like, oh really, Winthrop, really? Well, that's not what I have on tape. And I'll have hidden a security camera and I'll press play and it'll be him like whacking off to Wind in the Willows and eating potato chips. <laughs> and I'll be like, I'm sorry, my pocket watch broke. And I'll be like, oh really, Winthrop, really? How does that affect you answering the fucking door? <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, I think your cue is ding dong. Do you know how many badgers and blazers are dying for this position? And by the way, your motor carriage is in my parking spot again. I'm addicted to spray tan. It's amazing. Has anyone done it? Yeah. Yeah, it's the closest you'll ever get. She's like, yeah. It's the closest you'll ever get to beauty meets sci-fi. It's like so sci-fi that instead of a girl working there who looks like she lost her dreams one night at a frat party, there should be like a bald man in a silver sweatshirt explaining that there are three levels to mystic tan. <laughs> Level one, you will be tan but a fortnight and wish you had chosen otherwise. <laughs> Level two, you will walk among the commoners and live to tell the tale. And level three, eternal beauty. <laughs> it's crazy because you have to go in there and get totally naked except for a hairnet, so you just feel like a fucking insecure lunch lady. And then they tell you to stand in scarecrow position, which I just took as making a funny face. And you get this strange sense of euphoria as you stand there and you are slowly sprayed with the deceleration of the women's movement. These are the answers to a quiz I took on Facebook. My favorite pizza is... To be delivered without eye contact. <laughs> go back in time. <laughs> my friends would start using me for my time machine. <laughs> and if I could cure one disease, I would totally brag about it. <laughs> Thank you. Good night. <laughs>
Keep it going, guys. Lizzie Cooperman. Woo! You guys ready? You ready for your headliner? How's that pizza? It's not good enough? Oh, it's Groupon. So it's all fucked up, right? That's why you only ate 54% of it. That's why. Because that's all you can eat on Groupon. Uh, so you guys are having a good time? You guys ready for your headliner? Come on, I need a bigger applause than that! Awesome. You've seen this guy at MTV. You've seen him on History's Channel, History of the Joke, and the Ford Podcast. Put your hands together for Ed Galvez! <laughs> today, like outside of like doing this, and I'm like, my name's on stuff, like a real person. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I, I, I got to hang out with my nephew today, and, and he's cool because like, um, like he's 15 years old, and he always reminds me of what I was like when I was 15, okay? And, and, but the thing is, like, he has the hots on this girl, and so he's been spending a lot of time with her and like buying her stuff, but the thing was, like, he went in to give the girl the first kiss, and the girl gave him the cheek switcheroo. Now, if you don't know what the cheek switcheroo, it's this. It's like, when you're a guy, this will be a guy, and you go in to kiss the hot chick, I'll be the hot chick. Uh, <laughs> when the guy comes in to give the girl the kiss, the girl will non-verbally go, psych. And then the guy's like, oh no, no, what do I do, what do I do? I know, I'll kiss her on the cheek and pretend that's what I was gonna do the whole time. Mwah. Why are things weird? <laughs> and, <laughs> and the thing is, it doesn't matter if you're 15 or 115, that will shatter your self-esteem so much. So, <laughs> so since he looks up to me, I had to give him some type of advice, so I was like, you know what? Forget that girl, this is what you do, okay? Next time you go in for the smooch and the girl gives you the cheeks with truth, do not kiss her on the cheek. What you do is you just creep up your ear and you go, I smell you fart and you're disgusting. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he's cool, but he's always trying to get me to play video games, all right? And the thing is, I've been video game sober since, uh, since 2002, okay? I hit rock bottom with Bond Goldeneye for, for the N64, all right? And it sucks because like with video games before, like if you were, uh, you know, like Pac-Man and all that stuff, like you'd play for a while and then you suck and then you're done. With video games now, even if you're awesome, it's still like 40 hours out of your life just gone, okay? And that's you being amazing at the game, okay? And I hate how like, like it becomes like an addiction. Like you'll be playing until like four in the morning, like your life will get better if you beat this level or like you'll get a coupon for a free hooker, but it never comes up. <laughs> But, uh, but the thing that I would hate about it is that I would actually fight with the console like it was an abusive relationship, like it was like some like shitty girlfriend. Like, like, like you'll see what I'm talking about. Like, you'll be playing the game and you're like, all right, can we hit a deal? We can do this, we can do this. And they're like, God damn it! Fuck you! You're gonna do this to me? I paid the electric bill! Without me, you're nothing! You let my roommate play you! You let my roommate beat you! You're not gonna let me beat you? Have a nice life alone! <laughs> Slam! Look at me, I'm reading and I'm getting smart on books, but they're stupid on you. You messed up a great thing. <laughs> Slam. <laughs> Look at me, I'm exercising so it gets skinny and fuck girls. And I'm fucking my life on you. Why are you still here? <laughs> Slam. Creek. <laughs> oh, what are you doing here? <laughs> You're looking well. <laughs> oh, you noticed I have been working out. <laughs> of course I miss you. It's just not healthy. I just need some time to think. <laughs> Slam. Freak. I'm so sorry, baby. We could totally make this work. Just give me one more chance. What the? What the? So I went through a breakup recently, and uh, uh, it was the healthiest breakup anybody could have ever gone through, okay? We were together for like two years, and the first year and a half was great. And then the last six months, we just kind of drifted apart. And we are like, hey, we can stay together and work on the hate and resentment, or we can, uh, we can part ways and salvage a friendship for later. We're like, we're adults, let's do that. Here was the thing. Uh, right after the breakup, she got on Foursquare. Now, if you don't know what Foursquare is, it's a social networking site that syncs up to your Facebook and your Twitter and lets everybody know where you're at at all times, okay? So anybody that's on um, Foursquare right now, your Facebook and Twitter says, hi, I'm at the Acme Theater, okay? But, uh, and look, we're happy that we're apart. 
But since I was constantly seeing where she was at, and I wasn't seeing anybody else, like I was kind of slowly going crazy. So I'd see, like, I'd be on my phone and be like, oh, I'm at Bed Bath & Beyond. I'm like, oh, buy some new fuck sheets for a new fuck friend, huh? Your old, your old shit dropped in and full of holes and jizz. You gotta get some new ones. It's like, oh, I'm at Starbucks Coffee. Oh, must be tired from all that fucking. You gotta get your energy up for that noon with a new fuck friend. I'm at Home Depot. Oh, but when I fuck someone I see, huh? You didn't fuck someone with me because we were happy. Good old fashioned, tender loving care. Now you're off some trapeze monkey boyfriend, probably from Russia. <laughs> Is he gonna pick the mints out of your fur? Of course not, because you don't have fur. But if you did have fur, he wouldn't do it. And I would, because I miss you. <laughs> uh, I realized something uh, kind, of, kind of embarrassing about myself. I realized that I'm a boring lover. And I came up to this conclusion. <laughs> not because I used the word lover, but. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I realized that I'm a born lover because I was hanging out with a couple friends of mine, and my, 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 one of my friends was just like, yeah, like my ex-girlfriend, like she had like total like rape fantasies, and she enjoyed being attacked. And I was like, weird! And, uh, <laughs> and, then, I, and then my other friend was like, no, I had this one girlfriend, she didn't like joke being like choked during sex. And I was like, creepy! And, uh, and here's the thing, like, when I'm in the throes of passion with a lady, I'm so grateful to have somebody there that being mean to her never even like crosses my mind, you know? <laughs> Because, like, me at my, my drunkest, my most savage, my most primitive, my most dirtbaggiest, like, I'll be like, guys, let's get drunk, find some skanks, and, like, hug them and kiss them, and, like, have found breakfast. And like, oh, man, look at that hot bitch over there. I'm totally going to jizz all over the inside of this condom and just quickly throw it away so nobody has to sleep on a wet spot. Let's go! Boom, bass, boom, bass. Uh, I learned to forgive all my exes, uh, because I learned, uh, hear me out, I learned to forgive all my exes because I learned that they view me the same way I view my iPhone, okay? Um, I have, I have a, the iPhone 3G, it's not even 3GS, that's like the second generation one. Does anybody have an older model iPhone here? Yeah, you do? How unhappy are you? I'm happy, no, I'm happy. You're happy with your 3G? Okay, here's the, uh, yeah, never mind. <laughs> you got to that out, right? You ruined everything. Start over. So I was hanging out with my, with my nephew. Uh, he's great, 15 years old. Uh, anyway, anybody that knows the difference between their phones is miserable. ex-girlfriends view me the same way I view my iPhone. Because when I first got my iPhone, I was like, you know what, this phone has flaws, but it's the coolest phone I've ever had. I love this phone. <laughs> but then after a year and a half, they're like, fuck this phone! There's many cooler phones out there, why am I stuck with this stupid phone? And this phone drops phone calls like every 30 seconds. Every 30 seconds. Sometimes it lasts a minute, minute and a half if it's drunk enough, and then it just starts snoring. And then this phone was not this fat when I got it. So why is it so sweaty? I hate this phone! <laughs> Like, a little bit more on it, it's like, seriously, like, I consider my phone like an employee, okay? I pay a salary to provide a service to me, okay? But what it does is, like, I'll ask it to do something, like, open up text, and it'll be like, mm, no, wait a minute, maybe you want me to open up your iTunes, mm, no, wait a minute, maybe you want your address book, mm, no, wait a minute, and then it, like, flips out, and then it, like, crashes out. I'm a waiter. If I was to act like that at my job, I'd be fired instantly, okay? Like, because think about it, like, it would be like, I'm like, hey, how are you doing? My name is Ed, I'll be taking care of you, and I would like to, so when was the last time you changed your oil on your, so it hurts when you do the oil? So, I have when was the last time you called? <laughs> 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 that So if you know I have some of iced tea or uh, some Diet Coke or what? What? What happened? Oh, it happened again. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, 
But I, I did. I am seeing someone new. All right. <laughs> Let's pretend that's sexy. <laughs> You're all very polite. <laughs> well, anyway, I, I started seeing someone new, and it's been great. The thing is, we've only been seeing each other for about two weeks, okay? And her birthday is next week. So I want to get her something to let her know that I like her and that I care about her, but I don't want to get her anything too extravagant that like might like creep her out, you know? Like I don't want her to think I'm all romantic if I get her like a gift card to, you know, like Bed Bath and Beyond. But I don't want her to to get creeped out if I get her something like the head of the guy that raped her. <laughs> and I thought about it and I was like, hey, wait a minute. If I was seeing someone new and they gave me the head of the guy that raped me, Gary. I want to be like, whoa, 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 slow down, we're going so fast. I'd be like, thank you, thank you so much. Because it's just street justice, you know? <laughs> and I decided not to do it, because then if I do do it, then what am I going to do for Christmas? It's like, you got to build up. And to be honest with you, I don't even know if she's ever been raped. I just really hope she has, because that's such an awesome gift. It's like, <laughs> no court will convict you. <laughs> Key to the city. Um... I'm way over here, I was listening to Power 106, and if you don't know what that is, that's where hip hop lives. <laughs> and here's the thing about Power 106, uh, like, the music is whatever it is, uh, like, if you like it, great, if you don't like it, fine. But what I love about it is the commercials on Power 106, okay, specifically for a commercial called Intermax. Now what Intermax is, basically it's dick pills, okay? But that's not the funny part. The funny part is the spokesperson for Intermax, because it's not a doctor, or a scientist, or some guy that suffers from small wienerism, it's just an angry girl, and she hates small wieners. She hates small wieners with a passion. She hates small wieners like she saw a small wiener kill her parents when she was a little girl. That's how much she hates small wieners, okay? I'm not kidding. Word for word, this is the commercial. Hey, guys, why don't you get it through your head that us girls, we want that fuller feeling. Because us girls, we get together, and we talk, and we laugh at you. I mean, why on earth would you be born with a small penis anyway? I mean, you had a choice, right? And no, you were born with a small one like a stupid idiot. I mean, I mean, when God was handing out big wieners, you got to the small wiener line twice. So now you have two small wieners. One to put in your mouth and one in your butt, you baby wiener hoarder. <laughs> you still listening? Of course you're still listening because you need these pills. You know what? I was just going to give them to you. But no, I'm not. Now I'm just going to keep them so that way we'll die alone and the only person who care about you is your stupid cats. Now what's funny is that obviously these pills don't work, because if they work, they'd just be like, guys, they're here, and be like, ah, let's go! <laughs> yeah. They wouldn't be bullying you into buying them if they worked. It's like, if they had pills that cured cancer, they wouldn't be like, oh, why do you have tumors? Like, faggot, buy our pills, buy our pills. <laughs> oh, I've got tumors in my hands, I can buy our pills. <laughs> and be like, no, here you go, don't die. Have fun seeing your kid graduate. I'm like, thank you. <laughs> they, they wouldn't even need like a real doctor. Just like some guy in a white lab coat going, hey, uh, check out this mouse and his mouse sized dong. <laughs> Pretty mouse like, right? <laughs> Squeak! But thanks to modern science, check out this mouse and his raccoon sized dong. Don't you want a raccoon sized dong? I'm like, yes, I do. Give me those pills. I'm just pouring out my blowhole. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. Not to brag, but uh, as I mentioned before, I still work in a restaurant. And, um, <laughs> The worst part, the, the only thing worse than work, still working at a restaurant at my age is getting a new restaurant job at my age, okay? Because um, when I was younger, I pictured myself happy at this age. And <laughs> <laughs> but it sucks, like when you're going to get a new restaurant job, yeah. like the, 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 re the, the application is what messes you up because the front is fine. You need to know my name, my address, social security number. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, how <laughs> But you need to know that stuff, I get it. But when you flip it over, that's when it like, kind of gets under my skin because it asks you which college I went to, I'm like, I guess, which high school you went to, maybe, then which grammar school you went to. And I'm like, you don't need to know that. But like, I'm scared like if I don't fill it out, the guy's gonna be like, hey, wait a minute, this guy went to high school and, and college, but did you go to grammar school? This guy's a liar. <laughs> happy birthday, happy new year, you know? <laughs> but I'm scared like if I do fill it out, that he's gonna be like, oh, Mr. Galvis, have a seat. Um, we checked your references and we called that Hibbert Elementary School. <laughs> It appears you have way too many U's in citizenship to be working here at the Bubblegum Trim Company. 
We have no tolerance for people that chew paste. And if you pull a girl's pigtails, let her know that you like her. That's still sexual harassment. Now get the hell out of here. <laughs> now that joke is the reason why I want to quit doing comedy in America. Because I found out that my target audience is in Mexico. Because I've been working in restaurants for, for like, like 15 years, and I've been killing and slaying with the Latinos in restaurants like all this time, okay? <laughs> let me tell you a little bit about the, men that, the Latino men that work at restaurants, okay? Uh, they grow up to be very old, all right? But their sense of humor never matures beyond 13, okay? <laughs> so like, here's how I could kill like, four, um, like 45 minutes at every restaurant job I've ever worked. I'll just take the sports page of the newspaper and then just draw wieners in the mouths of all the athletes that are there. So, <laughs> so it'll be like something like catching like a, like a pop fly like this. And then I just draw a ghost wiener that just flew into his mouth. Not even the full man, just some random space wiener just went, ah! And they're like, oh man, that's so crazy, how'd you do that? And I'm like, magic. And then, um, <laughs> My other favorite one is the basketball player does like this. Now, to the untrained eye, this is just a basketball. But to the trained eye, it's one giant testicle. Then you draw another <laughs> testicle, big giant like wiener with some fluid coming out the tip. You're like, oh my god, he's gonna make a three-point shot with the hugest wiener ever! You know. <laughs> Here's the other thing about the Latino men. Like, they're all like, like, like they're all macho. They're all about machismo. They're like manly men, okay? But they love their gay humor, okay? Nothing's funnier to a Latino man than someone else being gay. It's hilarious to them, okay? <laughs> this is what happens to me every time I start working at a new restaurant. It'll be my first day, and I'll be like rolling silver or something. And then one of the busboys comes up to me and, it's a, and says to me, like, eres maricón, which is Spanish for are you gay? Now, I know he's messing with me, and, <laughs> and he knows that I, I know that he's messing with me. So what I do is I just mess with him back, and I turn him and I'm all, I'm all si, which is Spanish for yes. He's like, oh, why would you say that? And he runs away. Two minutes later, there's a second busboy being egged on by the first guy, and he's just like, go ask him, go ask him. It doesn't make any sense. I'm like, I don't get it. We're all supposed to drop. Just go do it. So he comes up to me, and he's like, eres maricón. I turn to him, and I'm like, si. And he goes, oh. And then he asks me, tienes novio, which is Spanish for do you have a boyfriend? And I go, si, do, which is Spanish for yes, you. He's like, I'm not your boyfriend. I'm a wife of kids. Back in Oaxaca. And he runs away. <laughs> and then it starts. One by one, just everyone starts coming out asking me giggles galore. Just this like, weird assembly lie of homophobia. Just like, like. <laughs> Finally, it's the end of the night. I'm exhausted. I'm just counting my money. And then meanwhile, like, the dishwasher comes out because he's the last for everything. He comes out and it's kind of like. <laughs> He's kind of like the little who from Whoville, except a little more hardworking. And he comes up. <laughs> Meanwhile, everyone else is around the corner, kind of like a Snow White and Seven Dwarfs, when they realize there's a white woman in their bed. They're just kind of like, <laughs> <laughs> and like I said, this is my showstopper, so I have to like make it good. So he comes up to me and he's like, "Eres maricón." So I turn to him up and I'm like, "Get the dijo," which is Spanish for "Who told you?" And then he goes, "Get," which is Spanish for "What?" And then I pull, I pull up my wanky and I put it up to his neck. I'm like, "Get the dijo, get the dijo." And he's like, "No, get no." Which is Spanish for no one, no one, no one. I'm like, Jesus is pantalones, Jesus is pantalones. Which is Spanish for take off your pants, take off your pants. <laughs> He's like, no, no, no. Which is Spanish for no, no, no. I'm like, Jesus is pantalones. So then he does. Now I don't rape him, but I do grind over his jockey shorts. And I'm like, get his body going ahora, get his body going ahora. Which is Spanish for who's gay now, who's gay now. He's like, yo, yo, yo. Which is Spanish for me, me, me. And then, and then anyway, they always try to wiggle out and I stab him in the neck. He's like, ah, ah. And then he falls to the ground. Everyone flips up. Everyone just circles around me. So then I'm take, just take off my shirt. I'm like, get up with Get get up with Which is special for who wants a piece of me now? Who wants a piece of me now? Get get up with <laughs> Caesar, who's the, the main line cook, comes out. He's like, that was funny, Holmes. I'm like, yeah, it's funny at first, but the whole night? And like, I don't know, we're just seeing how far you would go with it. And I was like, I hope you're happy. Hector's dead. <laughs> <laughs> and like, oh, that's okay. He's from Oaxaca. I'm like, oh, I guess so. He's like, uh, you like boba tea? I'm like, I love boba tea. And he's like, well, we just got Eat, Pray, Love on Blu-ray. We're going to go back to my place, watch it, do each other's hair, talk about boys. Are you in? I'm like, down as fuck. Let's go. <laughs> So that's how I start off every new restaurant that I've ever worked at. Um, speaking of homophobia, um, <laughs> forgive me, Jesus Christ. I'll go into this in a minute. Um, <laughs> have you noticed how we treat our phobias differently? Like if you're like agoraphobic, you're like, oh, I don't want to go outside because I'm a mouse. But if you're like homophobic, you're just a jerk. You're like, ah! 
Those people love each other and has nothing to do with me. Rage. Smash! Why do you keep hugging and holding hands? Must be how. I would like to think what happened to that guy if he slipped in a banana peel and he hit his head and got all his phobias mixed up. So he got all his like his homophobia and his arachnophobia mixed up. I'd like to think like his day would do something like this where it'd just be like, ah, oh, son of a bitch, there goes the garage. Honey, honey, goddamn spiders are taking over the neighborhood. What, don't tell me I'm overreacting. What's going to happen? Those spiders are going to want to marry other spiders. Then there's going to be a big parade down Main Street. You want that? Of course not. Cobwebs everywhere. <laughs> and then they're going to get a membership at my gym. Then they're going to be diddling their thoraxes while I shower. Do you want that? <laughs> of course not. I'm your man. How are we going to feel when our son does a problem with a brown recluse? It's not God's way. It's Adam and Eve, not Adam and Tarantula. <laughs> But whenever he does see a gay guy, he's like, ee, gee, gee, and just chases him around with a slipper. <laughs> <laughs> I do realize I need to grow up, all right? Because uh, I spent, <laughs> well, okay, well, when I was younger, I imagined myself like talking all fancy about like politics and the Wall Street Journal and mustaches. And, uh, <laughs> and, and, I, and the thing I, I was, I've only become really confident in my douchebaggery. I spent way too much time talking to my friend the other day about whether or not scorpions masturbated like this. <laughs> and, and if his mom would be like, Pitchy, what are you doing in there? And he's like, go away, mom. I'm just doing my homework. <laughs> Pitchy, it's almost sundown. You have to go hide in the cowboy's boot. I'm like, I'm not going tonight, mom. Just go away. Pitchy, you sound odd. I'm coming in. And then she just uses her claw to snap off the doorknob and burst in. And then Pitchy's like, Mom, no! And throws a blanket over him, but it's still pointing like straight up. <laughs> and there's like copies of like Ranger Rick and Zoo Picks just like thrown about all over the place. And then like Pitchy's like, Pitchy's mom's like, Oh, Pitchy. <laughs> Is this what you like? She's pretty. And then Pitchy's like, Mom, I said go away. Go. And she's like, Oh, my eye. Mom, mom, don't die. Mom, don't go, don't go. No! And then like, like he flips out, so then he just drags her up to like Lake Havasu, and like puts her on a piece of cardboard from a 30 pack of Miller Lite, and that sets her on fire, and then pushes her out to sea, and then like, and then he just like flips out, and so start wearing like black and trench coats and like slipknot shirts, and everyone's like, hey, what's going on with Pinch? He's acting all weird. And then like, and then the jocks are just like, hey, Pinchy's the faggot, let's go beat him up. And then he just flips out and just opens fire, and the whole school is like, uh, So that's kind of the intellectual, intellectual conversations I get into these days. <laughs> Okay, um, here's my problem with my sweat problem, okay? I, I realized that God designed me only to be eaten, all right? <laughs> Let me explain. Because God made like a bunch of animals, okay? And then he realized, oh, some of them suck. He's like, I better give them gifts or else they're just, they're just food, okay? So like, for instance, the chameleon, he, you know, he's just a little lizard, he's like, duh, 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 duh. and then like, like a hawk comes and like, ah! And then the chameleon's just like, ah, oh, I'm part of the tree. And then the hawk's like, no food. And the, <laughs> and then the chameleon says, I love another day, OK? The, the porcupine is just a dopey little bear, OK? You know, but he has like badass armor. He's like, yeah, I'll fuck up your face. You can't get any of this delicious goodness because I'm, I'm a tank, you know? <laughs> Human beings are designed with fight or flight, OK? I only got flight. Because <laughs> fight is not an option for me, okay? Uh, like, I, I can take punches, but I can't really give them back, all right? <laughs> so, since I'm only designed with flight, when I'm trying to get away from, like, a bear or a mugger or, like, a bear mugger, when I'm running away, <laughs> what God decides to do yeah, to help me out in my time of need is to blind me with my own sweat, sticking my eyes so I can't see what's going on. I'm like, ah, it burns, it burns, it burns. Hit a tree, fall down, bear's like, oh, delicious. Oh. <laughs> The possum, you might think, is the, the shittiest at self-defense, okay? But uh, the thing is, like, uh, just because he's an actor, okay? But, like, when he, when he plays dead, like, he falls down, and then, like, like, fluid comes out of his mouth, and he actually, like, like craps himself. So then the fox is like, oh, free lunch. Oh, gross. I'm going to get sick from eating that thing's poo. It's like, I'm out of here. And then, then the, po and the possum just wakes up and he's like, ha ha, acting, and then it runs away. <laughs> My sweat is salty, 
So as I'm running away, I'm seasoning and basing myself, only making myself more delicious for anything that wants to eat me. <laughs> this next bit is not a joke nor hilarious, and I'll prove it. Uh, from 2000 to 2005, my mom, my grandmother, and grandfather all passed away due to different things. So I had to get used to the funeral process like really fast. And it's like everything from like, uh, well, coming from a Latino family, um, you would give a eulogy in English like a normal person, and then, <laughs> and, and then you give the exact same eulogy again in Spanish, okay, for the Spanish-speaking relatives. So at first you're worried about like, getting your feelings right, and then you're worried about like grammar and diction and not sounding pocho, which is like uh, the Mexican brine tumble. Okay? <laughs> and then uh, the last funeral, which was uh, my grandmother's, my sister was preparing for the service, and she's like, Ed, can you do us a favor? I'm like, yeah, of course. She goes, can you do one of your funny eulogies again? And I was like, oh, God damn it, don't do that to me. Because like, I, I'll tell stories about my grandmother and, and like how funny and quirky she was, but if, like, like, uh, and if people laugh, then fine, but don't make me be all joke pants McGee at my grandmother's funeral. And so when she left, I was like, you know what, fuck her. So this is how I had vengeance on my sister at my grandmother's funeral, okay? <laughs> and now to say some words on behalf of Elpidi Galvez. It's her grandson, Ed. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. You know, what could be said about my grandmother that we all don't know and feel already, you know? She was so much to all of us. She was so many things to all of us. It's like I could still hear her voice in my head going, I'm so old and you're so thin. Eat beans, eat beans. When are you gonna get married? We're gonna have kids. Here, have more beans. She'll go to school, she'll drop me a comedian. Here, have more beans. Um, a lot of beans are broke up. What a mess. Hey, smell my flower. Squirt. Muchas gracias a todos que vinieron aquí. <laughs> ¿Qué puedo decir de un bolito que no sabemos? Todavía puedo oír su voz diciendo, ¡Soy tan vieja! ¡Soy tan vieja! ¡Como frijoles! ¡Como frijoles! ¡Pero vas a casarte! ¡Cuánto dinero! ¡Como frijoles! ¡Ay, yo tengo frijoles! ¡Soy rico! ¡Wop! ¡Yo no plátano! <laughs> ¡Qué tiradero! ¡Huelo mi rosa! ¡Squirto! I'm really glad you guys are here because a lot of times when I tell my friends to come to my shows, they always go like, oh, what kind of stuff do you talk about in your material? And I always go, I usually just talk about eating pussy. Like, really? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no, I don't talk about that kind of stuff at all. They're like, why do you say that? Because it's a joke, because I don't talk about that kind of stuff. And then they're like, you're a liar. And I was like, oh my god, you're right. So in order to clear my good name, I want to work on my first pussy eating joke, OK? <laughs> so please forgive me, everybody. I'm just trying to get into heaven, just like everybody else, OK? <laughs> So here's my impression of an alligator eating pussy. <gasps> there it is. I know, I'll pretend I'm a log. <laughs> Snap! So, uh, how was that? <laughs> I mean, uh, did you finish? <laughs> right on, right on. <laughs> hey, I was thinking, you know, since I did you, scratch your back, scratch. <laughs> Are you asleep? <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Goodbye, sleep. Goodbye, sleep. Shh. Goodbye, sleep. I'm gonna make a hot pocket, do you want things? Some ramen, I just changed the filter on my Brita, right? <laughs> right, right, you're asleep, sorry. Shh, go back to sleep, go back to sleep, shh. <laughs> uh, do you want me to set the alarm for you in the morning? I can give you a ride to work and meet all the coworkers and be like, I'm your new boyfriend. 
Or not, or not just some guy that dropped you off at work in the same clothes you wore last night. Why are things weird? Shh, go back to sleep, go back to sleep. Shh. Just chop, 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 chop. <laughs> so thanks for helping me get into heaven, everybody. So I had a birthday not too long ago. Yay! <laughs> um, normally, like, whenever my birthdays come around, I'm always like, meh, I'm not rich, or have a savings account, or self-esteem, meh, because I'm the penguin. And, uh... <laughs> So I was like, you know what, this year, be grateful for what's your life. What are you grateful for? And I was like, well, me, I'm grateful that I get to be doing stand-up comedy. I get to meet lots of cool people, get lots of cool opportunities like this. But the one thing I hated about being a comedian is like whenever I meet someone new, they're always like, oh, you're a comedian? Why don't you give me some of your material? I'll be like, no, that'll be awkward. And they're like, no, get up on stage and tell people jokes all the time. Why can't you give me a joke right now? Because I'm off the clock. That's a good reason not to tell you a joke. And they're like, here's a dollar. And it just makes me so mad. Because I feel like if I tell him a joke, that means I need to prove this guy that I am who I say I am. I feel if I don't tell him a joke, that means I'm not confident enough in my material to slay him with my wit. <laughs> so I thought about it, and this is kind of how I deal with it now. So like whenever I meet someone new, and they're like, oh, you're a comedian? Why don't you give me some material? I'll be like, really? Hold on one second. <laughs> and now, coming back to the bar. <laughs> and Galvez! <laughs> so hey, what's the deal with that guy that's always asking you to do your material when you're not on stage? He's always like, I'm stupid! <laughs> I want to judge you for free! <laughs> I don't want to support the arts because I'm a loser! <laughs> One second, is that a dick? So if you don't do anything this Tuesday, I'll be at the Acme Theater where I'll be headlining. If you can't come, it'll, you can stream it online. Where are you going? <laughs> why, why are you peeing in my car? Why did I park my car in this fictitious bar I just made up? Right, thank you so much. I'm at Galvez. <laughs> gentlemen, thank you for joining us at the famous Acme Comedy Hollywood for Hollywood Stands Up, an evening with Ed Galvez. <laughs> <laughs>